Okay, you guys, so this is what we get for not having a tripod. Let me make sure you're even here, meaning the pin is on. Like seven seconds, and around, and around the rosy. But yeah, this is what we get for not having a tripod. You are on a pile of books, well, two books, which is on top of just like this treasure map box looking thing. Anyway, so I tried little test runs, little like bloopers almost, and I crossed my legs, crisscross applesauce, and I look giant with a really small head, so no. So, we're like this. We're hanging out on my bed. My legs are off to your, my right, your left. All right. So, ring, 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 banana phone, because I'm so corny. Yeah. The thumbnail was real fun. But right, is this the wrong way? Um, I'll figure this out. Maybe for the thumbnail I did that wrong. No, I was holding it hello. Ring, 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 I don't know. But anyway, okay. So I'm gonna need my phone for this and I don't want to shake you like a leaf. I just, I cannot move or else you will move and it will be like an earthquake. Hopefully nobody stomps around in the house. Okay, can you shake my hair? Okay, so we are going to be talking about phone anxiety and or what is called, what is known as telephone phobia. And I don't want to say I have both because they're like the same thing, but whatever, this phobia, this fear, this anxiety problem, it goes by either or. So, I don't know why I just said that like that, but I did. Okay, so I have here on my notes some thoughts that I've been adding to, thinking about, pondering for these past few days, weeks, maybe it's been a week and a half, two weeks? I don't know. So, I don't know if you guys can see that. I have that, not yawn face, but that one emoji if you can see it all. Yeah, he's, he's not having it. He's tired and annoyed and stressed and me whenever I endure this phobia when I'm in the moment in the middle of an episode that's how I feel that's my emoji and just thinking about it that's that is the Emily emoji so phone anxiety slash phobia three exclamation marks points so I'm just gonna go yeah, I'm just going to go kind of read off of my notes, read them off to you guys, and add to it if I have anything to add, anything further to say. And I kind of sort of organized it. My OCD, my perfectionist ways, yeah, before it was just like rambly and out of order and all over the place, but I kind of went by theme. So this first section to begin... Um, I'm just going to say this, so let me say, let me summarize, it's basically how my stutter kind of flows into this fear and they just kind of like feed off of each other, this phone phobia as well as my occasional stutter slash stammer, so there's that, and then just never answering my phone, really avoiding phone calls, just my feelings on the overall problem at hand. Okay, so let's, let's begin. I'm gonna stop ranting and now I'm gonna rant more professionally off my phone to collect my thoughts and I'm still rambling. Okay, so, 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 so. I dread phone calls. I avoid them. I get a lot of missed calls and voicemails that I rarely, hardly ever return. Oops. And I'm just going to kind of sort of add to every thought, every sentence or two, what I have, you know, from what I have. So, I do get voicemails, and I rarely call them back. I do always listen to them, but that's eventually, and then I just, I really don't like phone calls. I really, really don't get a lot of missed calls. Really, I'll only answer if it's close friends, you know my best friend, even then it's a little bit awkward, just talking to my friends even, I prefer face to face, I prefer text, and I'm putting the nails, sorry, that's this nasty, 
uh, I'm nervous. And there was a hangout. But, um, yeah, so just phone calls. I'll obviously answer for my parents, my mom, my dad, but that's like it. I really don't like, I don't. I prefer to call than receive calls. So I'll make a phone call, but even then, it's ten times worse to have it like sprung on me, like a surprise, like, my phone's going off. Oh no. So I like never answer phone, prefer to text, so I just kind of sort of said that. Um, I don't know, texting is easier, you can't, it's on your own time and it's not really a surprise, you can really stop and think what you want to say, and you can't really stutter unless you do a typo or you purposely do a phrase that sounds like a stutter, that would sound like a stutter, whatever, I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm not sure. So, thankfully my phone doesn't go off all that much. It really doesn't. I mean, I'll get calls for work. A lot of my friends prefer to text if I have friends, when I have friends. No. Um, my family, my mom prefers to call, my dad prefers to text. Um, my sister, a little bit of both. My other sister, more FaceTime, which I don't really like. And I haven't really taken notes on that. But just speaking of that, just going to say something on that. Um, FaceTime, it's better, it's easier, it's kind of like face-to-face, -face. there's just, there's something about being on the phone, talking on the phone, you cannot see the person, and it's just the pressure to say things perfectly, but there's less anxiety, at least for me anyway, when I can see the person, and it's still hard, but not nearly, not that, not ten times, works are harder. Okay, um, I'm glad when it's over, you know, when the phone call's over, the phone call will always end, but it's hard when it's actually happening, when you're in the middle of it, the middle of the conversation, and when you're on the phone. So, that's very true, and that's very me. I just, I get this anxiety, this build up when my phone rings, and then I will occasionally flatline on the phone call. I'll feel flat, and then I'll get this peak of anxiety, and... And it will go downhill and I'm almost confident and it will go up and down. But every time I'm really, really glad when it's over. Like I can breathe again and my heart will chill out. So I'm nervous for phone interviews. I hope and pray that I don't have to ever get a call for a phone interview or make a call for a phone interview. Again, I would like that face to face. And I mean, I want to teach. I'm in L. Ed right now, I'm not in elementary school, but I'm studying L. Ed <coughs> in school right now. It's like I clear my throat and then you shake. <laughs> so sorry, guys. Very wobbly. Just cannot breathe, or else my breathing will vibrate across the bed and go straight to the camera. But no, so um, I don't want a phone interview fail, and I. Uh, just out of like self-pity and out of concern for myself and wanting to have a pity party and feed off of other people's stories and experiences with this phone anxiety. Anyway, some people would say that they would hang up on phone interviews, they would go blank on a question, they would feel the pressure, and they would just make that call and then hang up. So I do remember hanging up the phone once, at least once, I have hung up. Um, this was when I had to call in for work, not call in for work, but call for a work thing, trying to resolve a problem. So they asked for my name, and I said, I'm dot dot dot, my name is dot dot dot, and then I hang up. So that's just another example of this fear. I am just terrified of stuttering, and it just, it's not a good mixture, not a good combination at all. So you know, the stutter and the fear. So, let's go here. Um, I have been stuttering on my name and when I introduce myself sometimes of late, and I sometimes, even often, don't say it's me to say my name on the phone if I do call, you know, or answer someone not usually talk to. So, like, someone I don't usually talk to, I might not say who they are, and they might not know who I am, and so what will happen, what I'll do, is I'll just 
start talking. I'll answer, I'll call, and I just, I start talking, and I hope and pray that they have me in their phone and they know who I am. And if they don't, then they'll probably be really confused, and if they don't, they may or may not ask who it is, and then I might get so scared that I stutter, that I am so fearful of the situation, that I hang up, whatever. So, there was this one time I should have left my name, they did not return my call, this was when I called for work again, this was my home care aid job, HCA, so just going through the process, there's a lot of phone calls you have to make, there's a lot of going into offices and buildings, like fingerprints, background check, paperwork, whatever, and there was a phone call that I had to make to clear some things up, and they didn't know who I was, so they never called me back, they never returned my call. And that's just another thing. You are scared to say your name, you're scared to leave your name, and people, they're gonna react by not reacting because they don't know who the poop you are. So, BYU, I'm attending a church school, an LDS school, a Mormon school, BYU, Idaho, and I'm glad when I call them or they call me, they ask for my I number, what's called an I number. If you've probably heard of it, you probably know what it is, but it's just like, I can't really explain it. It's kind of like your ID almost, a number that you go by. So they find my name out that way. They will ask for your I number. They hardly ever will ask for your name. I think it's easier for them to pull you up via I number. So I really appreciate that. That's one less thing to worry about. So I'm not really all that nervous when it's BYU. Really, the fear is mostly in my name. Sometimes I'll spell it out. I don't know if I wrote that on here but I'll spell my name out. Like just the other day, so embarrassing, and I was so mad at myself, I thought about it for hours, throughout that day, throughout the next day, just replaying it, rewinding it in my head, and I was just like, there on the phone, and my heart, my mind, heart racing, mind going blank, mind spinning at the same time, and then the guy, he was asking for information, and there were a lot of awkward pauses, and my mouth was moving, but nothing was coming out, and I was just like stuck, and then my name, I spelled it out, and I didn't say it for a while, and then I said my last name, McAllister, and then I spelled out my last name, and then I had a pause, I really paused, and then I was like, Emily McAllister, so I spelled it out, and it didn't flow, and it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but it was worse for me, the worst. But right, okay. So... I wish I could say my name with confidence, but it's really hard for me on the phone and in real life. A name is important and you should be proud of who you are, proud of your name. I am, but I stutter and so it makes me look weak, I feel like, that anyway. So a name is really important. I remember this isn't necessarily involving a phone call or phone situation anyway, but um, it was few weeks back we were staying with my sister and this was like in between houses you know the move I'm in a new house right now but anyway we were at my sister's all of July and we would go to her church her ward as it's called her time and so introducing myself I couldn't say my name my mouth was opening I was trying to introduce myself the lady was asking who we were the visitors of my sister and so I just, I couldn't say my name. I hope we're like halfway. Um, kind of, I'll try to hurry up. But yeah, I'm like halfway. Anyway, um, I'm a little long. So, what I'm saying is, they had to introduce me, myself, for me, because I couldn't say my name. And then I laugh it off, and then I'm like, Emily, sorry, I was so nervous. You know, I'm feeling really anxious right now. And it's true, I was, but... Again, it's not the worst thing in the world, but when you're in it, when it's so big to you, when it's a fear, a phobia, an anxiety moment problem, then it's huge, and it's big, and it's bold, and it's bad, and it's so, so hard. It's hard to live with, it's hard to deal with, and anyway, what I'm saying, just to go off of that, dot, 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 um, I was talking to my parents about it after, and I was almost crying in the car, and I was like, I've been thinking, and it's true, I was, I have been, I'm thinking I want to change my name. It's just those three syllables, it's starting with an eh sound, noise, it's just, it's so hard for me to say, and I stutter on it sometimes, and that's why I'm so scared for school, I'm scared for that first day, every first day of every semester of every class, 
saying my name, introducing myself, stuttering on my name, and maybe if I like pitch my voice a little bit differently, higher, lower, drag it out, laugh, something, maybe that will help. But when I introduce myself or fail to, did not work out <laughs> at church that one time, I just said to my parents, I really want to change my name, and I thought, th th thought about that all day long, all that Sunday. I was just so PO'd, and I was researching it, like, should I change my name, and all these people had changed their name, and they were like, oh, here's my story, I have a very common name, I don't like my name, I want to be more unique and individual, and I don't think it's fair, or right, right, fair, whatever, that parents can choose your name, I think you should be able to choose your own name when you're, like, of age, and when you're mature and wiser, and you've thought about it. Nobody really had that fear that I had, that I still have, like, stuttering on my name, so that's why I wouldn't want to change it. I have what's called an addictive personality, where I fixate on something, I focus on something, it seems like 24-7, 100%, could be that day, that week, I just, I can't stop thinking about it, and that was that Sunday with my name, and that was the only reason I wanted to change my name. I do like it, it is common, but it was because of the stutter. So... Anyway, I'm not going to change my name, I don't think, and I like Emily Euphoria as well. Okay, so mild stutter, stutter on my name more than any other word, and that's very true. I can be on the phone and I can hardly stutter, maybe I'll slip up on like a word or two, if you were to count, I mean I count, like every conversation. But anyway, it's my name, it's that name, you know. So I hate talking on the phone, I stutter for that reason. What does that mean? Um, oh, so the hating talking on the phone part, I stutter for that reason, because I hate it. So I think that's another thing. And because I stutter, I hate talking on the phone for that reason, the reason of stuttering. I said that very strangely. My notes are strange. <laughs> okay. So stuttering in real life is hard, and this topic is for another video, for another time. But I will just say this. You look normal, but you don't sound normal. You look normal, then you start talking. And you slip up on your words, you cannot say words, you cannot talk, you stutter, you stammer, the speech impediment is real. And then when you're on the phone, that's all they know, that's all they can see, they can only hear your voice. So all they know is your voice, and it's all in your voice, literally. So what's worse? Is it, what was I thinking when I said this? What was I thinking? Um... Um, 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 um. It's all in your voice. So, alright, what's worse? So, when you're on the phone and you stutter and that's like all that they can hear, or when it's in real life, you look normal, but then you start talking, you don't sound that normal. So stuttering on the phone, but not being able to see you, so they judge you based on your voice and your speech impediment only, or them seeing you in real life and then they judge you and they're like, you look normal, but you don't sound normal. You don't look, sound how you look. You don't look how you sound, whatever. So, I'm a big time perfectionist, so when I don't sound close to perfect, near perfect, you know, it drives me crazy, drives me nuts, and I'm really, really, really pissed. So, a stutter is an imperfection, people might say. And this was like a Facebook post I was talking about stuttering awareness, stammering awareness. I think it was May, I think it was. And I did this a post on Facebook, and somebody, basically my mom's friend, an older friend from church, she, um, she was saying, well, first of all, first off, my post was about, you know, stuttering and how I've overcome most of it, and it's not as bad as it was, but I talked myself out of it, per se. So, anyway, I was just like, blah, 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 blah. I feel like I've really been able to overcome it. I'm still me. I'm whatever, and she was like, how, how did she say it? She was like, kind of made me mad, honestly, but just like, oh, your weaknesses can turn into strengths. That's right, that's what she said. And I was just like, okay, and I commented kind of like, oh, yeah, huh, thank you. But I was like, Ugh. I wanted to retort something, like, furious and just angry, like, um, no, uh, Stuttering speech impediment is not a weakness. I mean, just the way she said it. And I don't want to say it wrong. 
Um, I'm just trying to remember what said what she said. But it was kind of like that, like, oh, the weaknesses are now strength. Like, it's, it's not really a weakness. Just, just the way that she said. Okay. So I would keep count, keep track of how many mess ups, mess ups. I would have a year, a day, a week, a month, a year, just in my head um, of stuttering. And it's so sad and so messed up. So I wouldn't really count, but I would say like, oh, I think it was this many times in January, or oh, it's another year where I stuttered on the phone, or it's another year when I stuttered at school, when I read aloud, when I introduced myself, and I met somebody new. So that kind of thing. And that's, that's really, really warped. That's an unhealthy perspective and view on yourself. So sad and trying to really work on that. So I replay it, I perfect it, I perfect the imperfection. So you can call it an imperfection, but I don't really like that word, that term. I don't want to use that. So I replay it. I replay this, what I call imperfect, imperfection moment. And that's really unhealthy too. Um, I'll try to hurry because I know you probably want to go. So, um, I also have phone voice. Probably should have said that first. That's like my number one thing. That's my number one, mm, like, problem with talking on the phone. It's my phone voice. I have a higher voice. Some people call it like a princessy voice. I don't know. It's not that common, I don't think. Someone even said it's like a Disney princess or like Snow White. I love Snow White, so I guess that's a compliment. But my phone voice, sometimes I can hear the echo in my voice and on the phone whenever I talk on the phone. And I'm like, oh no. And my dad says that me and one of my sisters have that, like a little cute phone voice. And we sound more like preppy and chirpy and cheerful or something. But I'm really self-conscious about it and I feel really, really judged. And I just, I'm so worried about this annoying phone voice or what I hear in myself, this annoying phone voice. So some people, they might say, oh, relax, breathe, calm down, you're fine, you're okay, it's whatever. And I go into another room, like I'm always pacing, but you can go into another room if you're really nervous, I guess that might help. That's what I've heard with anxiety and stuttering and social anxiety, SA, you know, but it's hard to do that when you're on the phone. You can pace, and that's another thing. So I'll pace the whole time. That or I'll have to play with something. I have to play with something in my hands, which sounds so wrong. But I don't know. It could be a pen. It could be the blanket that's closest to me. It could be a pillow, just like patting it down, twirling my hair. I do that a lot. Bad habit, trying to break that habit. So just stuff like that. Um, so if I had a vintage phone, a vintage cord that actually works, that I could actually talk on, actually this guy does work. He works, which is amazing. But, yeah, so, what is happening? Um, yeah, I would be all tangled up. I would get all tied up because I'm, I'm everywhere around the room, around the house. I hardly ever sit still, or if I do, it's not sitting still. It's like I'm sitting and laying down, but I'm like moving my legs, my arms, talking with my hands, and like, playing with something with my hands, in my hands, and my feet will be on the wall, my legs will be sprawled out, you know. Um, so no reason to be anxious, just people, you know, they're just people, they're just human beings, you are one, everybody's imperfect, everybody's not perfect, everybody has their ways, has their things, their quirks, their uniqueness, and phone anxiety is one of them. And because of that, I can't really see them as just people. The other person on the end of the line, whatever, on the other end, I'm fearful of them because I don't want them to, to judge me. So I'm scared of the judgment. I'm not so much scared of the person or the actual conversation, but I'm just scared of how it will be perceived, how they're going to think of me and view me. So no reason to be anxious. They're just people, but not so with social anxiety, with SA. And I also have performance anxiety. I feel like I have to be perfect almost all the time. Not so much in real life, but like on the phone, introducing myself, interviews. So anxiety, big, bold, bad. So anxiety, I need a distraction, something to always subconsciously play with. Something in my hand. Yeah, it's not kind of wrong, but that's kind of like what I already said. Excuse me. 
so I can be funny with people I know, especially in real life, not so much on the phone, but on the phone sometimes when I'm feeling brave and more confident than not. Um, but always still, even then, a little bit nervous. So it's easier to more be myself and be more just lighthearted and almost like enjoyable to be around and talk to in real life versus on the phone. So super, super, super duper hypocritical of self on the phone. That is me. But really and truly, why should I give two poops? Um, other people, they don't care. They probably don't even think about it or even notice. But we totally do. It's very obvious and real to us. Right, so when you're in that moment, when you're in the middle of something, that's kind of all you can see, all you can feel. Then you can look back and you can see it wasn't all that bad and you survived it and you're now okay. You might not be totally healed or totally over it, but you know that you somehow managed to make it through. And that's a really positive perspective that I think I need to have, that I need to hear, because I can't be too hard on myself. I mean, another thing, you think about this. So the thing about anxiety, they're paying close attention to themselves, so they're very self-conscious and paranoid of how they're coming across and how they're acting. So what they're saying, they pay attention to what they're saying, they zone in on that. So the focus is almost on themselves, so not so much in a conceited or selfish way or like all about me way, but more like, you know, they have anxiety too. Everybody has a little bit, some of us more than others, especially me on the phone, but it's like, why should you be self-conscious because everybody else is? So there's really no point to being self-conscious, that's another post, but does that make sense? I don't know. So I've talked to my parents about this, about phone voice, phone anxiety, whatever, don't like talking on the phone, they know this. Um, so they try to make me feel better and they probably lie about this. They say that they can't tell, that other people can't tell. My dad says he used to be like that on the phone and he's in business, he graduated in business. And to be in business, you gotta talk, you have to talk to people, you gotta sell a product, you interact all the time and on the phone. And so he was really nervous and anxious on the phone, and now it's like he can breeze through it. It just comes so easily and naturally to him, and the conversation just flows, and you can sense his confidence and his lightheartedness, and I wish I had that, and I'll try to be better about that. And so just to wrap it up, so there are worse things, and there's more to life than this fear, than this phobia. And again, it's really hard to see it. I've had a really, really big flare-up of late just with my speech and my anxiety in general, my social anxiety, my anxiety on the phone, but I have to tell myself there are worse things. If a stutter is like the worst thing in my life right now, which honestly it feels like it kind of sort of is, like it's controlling everything, which I guess is still really big and huge, but if that's like the only thing, then I'm going to have a pretty sweet a life. And so, like I said, you can't be too hard on yourself, just don't be hard on yourself at all, not too hard on yourself, but just be your own friend, be your own best friend, be kind to yourself, and just know that if you have this phobia, if you have a phobia, know that it's not you, it's a part of you, it's not all of you, and you can survive it, and you can get help for it, you can get treatment, and they say face your fear, but sometimes you just can't. If you can't handle it, you can't deal with it, like phones, like phone phobia, just don't answer your phone, do not pick up, have breaks. Tell people you prefer to text. I mean, that's what I do. And even FaceTime, like, only with my sister. I may be my best friend. She wants to. Maybe we will. Maybe I'll be brave. But it's like, you have to have standards. And you need to set standards, like, rules for yourself, rules for other people. Like, please respect this. This is hard for me, and I just, I can't do it. I can't handle it. This is not for me. So that can be a way to kind of like save yourself so sometimes you do have to face your fear you have to get over it if you want to you know improve and you want to do something with this phobia turn it around and make it a strength weakness and a strength as that person would say which i don't believe in but anyway so it is a phobia it is real if you have it if you don't um the phone call will end and then this is more for me but i can only progress and improve from here with this and I will be okay, I am okay, there are other phobias in this world and I wish that there were not because they can make your life a hell.